Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a church bus flipped over in Harris County Sunday afternoon. 13 children are among those hurt. And that historic Artemis One moon mission has come to an end. The Orion capsule splashed down in California Sunday. Also, police in Milwaukee say a bomb threat forced the evacuation of the Riverside Theater where singer Patti LaBelle was performing. Take a look on the outside where the conditions currently on the humid side, cloudy skies. There's the traffic along the uh, Lone Tree Road and the uh, US 59 corridor right there. Big change this week. What are the changes? Cold temperatures, I'll tell you that much. Take a look at those falling temps coming up and, raise, and rising rain chances also. The Dallas Cowboys try to avoid the Texas size upset. Coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. Today is the 12th day of December 2022. The time is now 6.30 on your Monday morning and today is National Gingerbread House Day. Let's go ahead and turn to First Warren Storm Team Meteorologist Trey Mining. Trey, I have not made a gingerbread house. It's been a few years. I bought the kit last year, but it just collected dust on my shelf. <laughs> How about you? Have you made a gingerbread house yet with Mary Ellen? Not quite yet. Uh, we've done that years ago, but it's fun to do. Of course, it makes it look nice and pretty. May have to do that, try to fit it in, in any time between now and Christmas, of course. On the outside, 66 degrees in Victoria, cloudy skies. With dew point 65 degrees, getting near the temperature. So that means there's some patchy fog out there somewhere in the area. And also a few little rain showers as well. One there, Bay City's faded out. Another one well out south of Gulf of Mexico by about 40, 50 miles. And a few more along the warm front, just uh, behind it, George West along uh, Interstate 37 between Corpus Christi and the George West area and, and also near San Antonio. So for the currently on the outside, a little bit of patchy fog along the coast, especially in Frio County, County, Aransas County, and in Matagota County and up to Wharton County. So be careful driving out there. Nothing widespread, nothing real dense, but it is there, so please be aware. And the fog will be lifting out of here by about 9 o'clock or so. Good 12-mile visibility is about 11 a.m., and that will last the rest of the day in around the region, even though we have cloudy skies coming up. A little bit of morning fog I showed you this morning along the coast. Warm again today, getting near near the 8-degree mark. I think we'll get pretty close to it. And also for your day tomorrow, increasing rain chances. That's also a plus. Front coming through for your day tomorrow, where it really increases rain chances around here. We'll show you that a little bit later on. Much colder air coming up this week and later on this week. First of the series of two cold fronts coming through, one will be tomorrow and one will be about Friday or so, which will really increase our temperatures and they'll decrease. I want to go downward on the temperatures, getting ready for the big coats coming up by the weekend, of course. We'll give you the details on that. Rain chances, anything else going on weather-wise, we'll let you know coming up a little later on in the full forecast to come. Make it a great day today. Enjoy the warm, wear, warm weather like we have it, because like uh, I am a fan of warm air, because the cold air is not that far away. Carolina? Thank you, Trey. At least one person was critically injured when a church bus flipped over in Harris County Sunday afternoon. The crash happened near an apartment complex on Uvalde Road around noon. A church representative says multiple people were aboard the bus, all members of Mount Zion Baptist Church in Uvalde. 16 people were hurt, including 13 children. 14 of those individuals were taken to area hospitals. At least one is in critical condition. Authorities say the driver of the bus was speeding around a curve, which caused the bus to crash. The driver was not injured and did not show any signs of being intoxicated or under the influence. The crash under investigation. El Campo police asking for your help in identifying the man on your screen. If you know this man, Sergeant Stafford wants to hear from you. 979-543-5311 or call Crime Stoppers at 979-543-TIPS. You can also submit an anonymous tip through the P3 Tips app on your cell phone. The Porch Pirates are out looking for loot this holiday season. Here's actual footage of a local Porch Pirate in action. If you recognize this person, then Detective Robinson with the Victoria Police Department wants to hear from you. 361-485-3730. Remember to track your pack packages, require a signature, and monitor your doorbell camera to try to avoid being a victim this holiday season. Leading us to your viewer poll, have you ever had a package stolen, yes or no? Let's take a look. Okay, 18% of you say yes, unfortunately you have. And 82% of you say thankfully no. Come to crosswordstoday.com slash vote to take part, or you can also scan the QR code right there in your screen. The historic Artemis One moon mission 
concluded Sunday with the Orion capsule splashing down into the Pacific Ocean. Artemis 1 launched last month from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral after a 1.4 million mile fl flight lasting nearly 26 days. The next generation uncrewed Orion capsule returned to Earth, entering the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean at 12 20 p.m. before splashing down right on schedule at 12.40 p.m. off the west coast of the Baja Peninsula. Throughout its mission, the Orion capsule beamed back photos and videos of the lunar surface. NASA plans to two more Artemis test flights before it launches regular missions to the moon to establish a lunar base camp. New information about WNBA star Brittany Griner's recovery after spending 10 months in Russian custody. We've learned Griner is already playing basketball. This morning, Brittany Griner's agent says for the first time in 10 months, the WNBA star picked up a basketball and did a light workout. Her first act? A dunk, of course. Griner is staying at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, where she was taken after her release from a Russian prison last week. Griner and her wife are staying at a hotel on the base. Over the weekend, she enjoyed a barbecue meal and reunited with her family as she continues the reintegration process. Her agent saying she's doing really, really well. She seems to have endured this in pretty incredible ways. Griner also got a haircut Sunday, cleaning up the cut she chose to have while imprisoned. Griner's attorney saying she cut her famously long hair to keep it from freezing in the cold of the Russian penal colony. But while Griner recuperates, critics are slamming the prisoner swap with Russia that freed arms dealer Victor Boot, the man nicknamed the Merchant of Death. The Trump administration was always very clear. We weren't going to trade bad guys for celebrities because it creates the wrong incentives for the bad guys. On social media, former President Trump called the Griner exchange crazy and bad and claimed he turned down a proposed deal with Russia that would have traded Victor Boot for former Marine Paul Whelan. Whelan's brother saying this about Trump over the weekend. My brother pleaded from his prison for President Trump to tweet about him during President Trump's term in office and President Trump didn't. And for him now to talk about Paul at all uh, is really offensive. White House officials say they're doing everything they can to bring Whelan home and say the process of bringing Griner back to the U.S. has provided valuable insight. We're more informed. We have a better sense of the context here, where the Russians' expectations are, and we're just going to keep working at it. Griner has not spoken publicly since her return, but she's expected to issue a statement this week. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A scary moment Saturday night when a bomb threat forced an evacuation at a theater where singer Patti LaBelle was performing in Milwaukee. LaBelle was on stage at the Riverside Theater when her security whisked her away. Everyone attending the concert was also safely evacuated. Riverside said the, sh the show was postponed following a bomb threat. Police searched the theater with canine units and no explosives were found. Congressional leaders and the White House are struggling to reach a deal on a massive government funding package. Democrats and Republicans still have not agreed on top-line spending numbers that will fund the federal government through the fiscal year that ends in September of 2023. The two parties are about $26 billion apart on domestic spending. Lawmakers warn they will almost certainly will need to pass a short-term measure to avoid a shutdown at the end of the week. Officials hope to wrap up their work in the lame duck session by Friday, but now are making plans to stay around right up into the Christmas weekend. Okay, get your cell phone, scan this QR code. It's our quick response code to download the Crossroads Today app. You can get breaking news alerts, vote on our viewer poll, get the latest news, weather and sports and learn about our ongoing contest right there on the app. Submit those news tips and those Christmas photos. The time is now 638 on your Monday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. The new Rockport Center for the Arts open to the public on Sunday. The man accused of making a bomb in one of the deadliest terror attacks on Americans in U.S. history is now in custody. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The charges he faces coming up. Take a look on the outside. We're going to say Texas cloudy skies, warm front coming through. This front right here, the series of two fronts that are cool us down coming up for this week. We'll talk about that and temperature changes coming up. If you paid more for your car insurance this year than last year, give us a call at Fred Loya Insurance or visit us at fredloya.com. My insurance rates went up more than 50%. That's when I called Fred Loya. My insurance went up over $100 a month. That's $1,200 a year. So I called Fred Loya Insurance. If you think you're paying too much for your car insurance or if your renewal rates have gone up, start paying less and call or visit us online at fredloya.com.
Do you have pain, numbness, or burning in your hands or feet? I got my flexibility back. Pain is gone. Prickling pain often caused by peripheral neuropathy? The zappo feeling has gone away and there's no pain. Are you suffering from chronic knee pain and stiffness? Or have you been told that knee surgery is your only option? Now that I've had this treatment and I can walk a little bit, I feel like I got my life back. Call Neurogenics now. Our physician-run medical offices in Victoria are helping our Texas patients move on from their chronic knee pain and their pain and numbness from peripheral neuropathy without surgery and without medications. Our treatments are covered by Medicare and most insurance. You can move around, you can go back to what you used to do. To get relief just for my toes, it makes me feel like a million bucks. Call Neurogenics now. Our unique non-drug, non-surgical, and non-chiropractic treatment program is helping our Texas patients end their chronic knee pain and peripheral neuropathy pain. Call us now. Neurogenics is standing by to help you move on from the pain. Now with so much on the line, more Americans are turning to David Muir and ABC's World News Tonight than any other newscast across all of television. Get the day's news in your inbox email newsletters from 25 News Now. Sign up today. Go to crossroadstoday.com forward slash email alerts to get started. You know I love me some good GMA in the morning. Robin, George, Michael, and GMA. Now that's how you start your day. Good morning, America. Yep, bring your friends. Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. Current time is 640. Train mining here. Take a look at the future tracker. We're kind of zoomed into our region here. Warm front moving through throughout the day. Keep a few rain showers along the boundary with it and keeping that tropical moisture in place. That's going to be important to increase rain chances for your day tomorrow. Let's run this model all the way through the majority of the day on your Monday into your Tuesday. Mostly cloudy and warm for the majority of the day on Tuesday. But here comes the front coming down from the north. There it is right there with a line of rain showers and thunderstorms along and ahead of the boundary. Pushing offshore by about 6 a.m. or so early on your Wednesday morning. Coming through in Victoria about 5 o'clock or so Wednesday, I mean Tuesday afternoon. So far this, the Storm Prediction Center has a marginal risk of severe weather from Wharton all the way up to Houston area and points to the east. But with the front close enough, we're close enough to maybe getting a... a a thunderstorm or two that may be a bit on the rough side or even severe around here in my opinion so i'm putting tomorrow as a possible alert day for us here in the crossroads region so be weather aware in addition to the temperature changes some of the storms especially on tomorrow afternoon with the front will be a little bit on the heavy side or maybe even severe possibly as we go throughout the time period so please be weather aware and a quick look at port o'connor today be careful out there if you're going there's your high and low tide so that the winds 10 to 15 knots two three foot sea slight chopping area bay waters Water temperature is 73 degrees, measured earlier in the bay, just south of Port O'Connor. Be careful if you're going out there, of course. A little bit of wind on the windy side. Could be a rain shower, too, roaming around the Port O'Connor area and the majority of the Texas coast. Full forecast comes up later on again this half hour, looking at those cold temperatures, especially by the weekend. Carolina? Thank you, Trey. The Texans push the Cowboys to the brink. Weekend sports anchor Zach Brown has the unbelievable comeback in sports. The Texans and Cowboys unfortunately play once every four years, and although the Texans are just not good, they gave Dallas everything they could handle. In fact, having a late lead, Dallas not looking great, but the story of the game. Late in this one, the Texans picking off Dak Prescott and set themselves up for easy points, but get stuffed in the goal-to-go -go situation, and Dallas has its goal line stand. They would also come in clutch. Zeke gets fed, and the Cowboys barely pull out the victory over the worst team in the NFL. Mr. Irrelevant, a.k.a. Brock Purdy, took on Brady and the Bucks, and I'd say he did a pretty good job. The Niners dominant over the now 6-7 and seven Buccaneers. Brock Purdy stats in the first half, 14 of 18, with three total touchdowns and 185 yards. What a debut. Big news, though. Debo Samuel emotional as he was carted off with a leg injury, but it is believed to be a high ankle sprain. He will undergo further evaluation. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. We want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and on your cell phone, just search Crossroads Today Plus. A major breakthrough in the long-running investigation into the terror attack involving Pan Am Flight 103 that exploded over Scotland. The man accused of making the bomb that brought down the passenger plane nearly 34 years ago is now in U.S. custody, and he could appear in court as soon as today. And families of the victims who died in the attack are reacting. 
After an investigation spanning more than three decades, this man, Abu Aguila Masood, is now in U.S. custody facing federal charges. Accused of building a bomb that took down Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland. It was the deadliest terror attack ever on British soil, killing 270 people, including 190 Americans. Bert Ammerman's brother Tom was one of them. Everybody loved Tom. He had two daughters at the time, six and four, a wife. He was 36, young. He didn't get to live his life. On December 21st, 1988, Flight 103 was en route to New York from London, in the air less than an hour when an explosion brought down the Boeing 747. Everyone on board was killed, including a group of Americans from Syracuse University who'd been studying abroad. Debris scattering so far, 11 people on the ground also died. Families can't walk away from this. This has been part of the legacy of their loved ones and their growing up. Massoud was at the time known as the chief bomb maker for former Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. Stephanie Bernstein, whose husband Michael died in the attack, telling ABC News Massoud confessed to the bombing but to a Libyan authority, adding it wasn't clear that ever, ever we could get him. His extradition to the U.S. a major breakthrough. Catherine Turman, a former FBI assistant director who worked closely with the victims' families, calling it another step toward accountability, even after all these years. Now, it's not clear how U.S. authorities brought Masood here to the U.S. He is expected to appear in D.C. federal court as soon as today. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. The New York Center for the Arts opened to the public Sunday. They got the ball rolling with a grand opening celebration and ribbon cutting over the weekend. Several hundred members and dignitaries were on hand for the event as the new 14,000 square foot arts and education facility opened its doors for the first time. Located in the heart of downtown Rockport, the $12.5 million project, which includes the Rockport Conference Center, has been years in the making. The time is now 6.46 on your Monday morning. Still to come, at least 20 people were hurt during clashes in southern Peru, four of them police officers. Time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Brenda. I want to wish you a happy birthday because you are the best. You do so much for everybody. We all love you. Happy birthday. And now happy birthday to Olivia. Happy first birthday to my sweet baby girl. Love and hugs and blessings from the family. Happy 11th birthday to Cinco. We love you from mom, dad, and Mari. An actress and Jeopardy host, Mayim Bialik, is 47 today. Happy birthday. And happy 70th birthday to Janie. That's from Joe David and Maricela. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to crossroadstoday.com. Click on Morning Under Home. You'll see the KVU Submit Your Birthday. And happy birthday to everyone celebrating one today, or maybe you celebrated over the weekend. The time is now 6.46 on your Monday morning. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Dr. Jack Lee, a cataract and glaucoma specialist at the Victoria Eye Center here in beautiful Victoria, Texas. Did you know there are some eye diseases that may not have any symptoms in earlier stages? Glaucoma is one of these conditions. Glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve, which connects the eye and the brain. This can cause slow loss of peripheral vision over time. A major risk factor is increase in the pressure inside of the eye. If left undiagnosed and untreated, glaucoma can lead to significant vision loss, even blindness. Thanks to advances in technology, glaucoma can be diagnosed during routine eye exams. While there is no cure for glaucoma, there are treatments to manage the condition and preserve your vision. There is much more to learn about glaucoma in the eye. Contact the Victoria Eye Center today to schedule an eye exam, even if you aren't having active vision issues. As a glaucoma specialist, I look forward to helping you understand what's happening with your eyesight and answer all of your questions. Thank you for your attention. And this morning's GMA First Look, an urgent search for a missing American student in France. It's not characteristic of Kenny to not reach out to us and let us know what's going on. Kenny Deland Jr., a 22-year-old senior at St. John Fisher University in New York, was supposed to return home this week from southeastern France, but his mother received a concerning phone call in late November from a college liaison. She had to file a missing persons report because they had not seen him in 24 hours. I'm not there. I'm here thousands of miles away. The last time his parents heard from their son was on November 27th, 
According to the family, he boarded a train near the university and headed south, his phone pinging along the way. If anybody has a way to help us and find him, help us. And coming up at 7 a.m., more on the investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News. Hey, good morning once again. I'll take a look at the temperatures throughout the day. Starting off in the 60s and near 70 degrees by the late morning hours. 5 o'clock, we're in the mid to upper 70s around here. And for your Tuesday, starting off like we did this morning, near 70 degrees for the overnight lower, a few degrees lower than that. We're still getting up to about 80 degrees for your day for, for Tuesday's highs for your Tuesday, of course. But look at what's happening here. That's the front by 6 o'clock entering areas near Gonzales and getting near Cuero and Yoakum and pushing through the crossroads area completely by 1 o'clock in the morning on your Wednesday. Cooling down the temperatures in the 60s will be in the 50s and 60s coming up for your Wednesday for the daytime highs that is. Another stronger front comes in by the weekend just before it on Friday to give us even colder temperatures than this. So this is kind of a forerunner of things to come. First one Doppler not seeing much in the way of precipitation except for a few rain showers well south there in the Gulf of Mexico. One made it into the areas near Bay City earlier but it's fading on out now. Same thing along the Interstate 37 corridor between San Antonio and Corpus Christi. For the meantime for us, warm and humid, for the cold temperatures to come, we'll take one more look at that forecast before we go later on this half hour. Carolina? Thank you, Trey. And now it's time for today's question of the day. Are there only red poinsettias? Like us on Facebook, Crosswords Today, post your guest today's question. We'll have the answer in just a few minutes. At least 20 people were hurt during clashes in southern Peru, four of them police officers. The motive for Saturday's protest is not clear, but it took place in one of several towns where people have taken to the streets, demanding the release of ousted and now jailed former president Pedro Castillo. Meanwhile, Peru's new president, Dina Boliarte, named her new cabinet just days after Castillo was sacked by Congress and later arrested for rebellion and conspiracy. Castillo has been accused of attempting to dissolve the legislature to prevent an impeachment vote. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. Toys for Tots, stuff the truck, wrapped up Sunday. Need weather around the clock? When the weather changes in the crossroads, you need a reliable source. Visit Interactive Radar online for the latest conditions in the crossroads area. Crossroadstoday.com. Weather at your fingertips. Avatar. Avatar, the way of water. You don't know what to expect. Is unlike anything you've ever seen. Tuesday night, go behind the scenes. What will audiences see in this film that they've never seen in a movie before? Incredible. Amazing. Tuesday night on ABC. Hello, I'm Robin Cadle, President and CEO of the Food Bank of the Golden Crescent. I want to personally invite you to come visit our new facility at 801 South Laurent. Come meet our incredible staff, tour the facility, learn how you can become a hunger action hero in helping us heal the hurt of hunger. Are you ready to change your career path? Come join our sales team at the Victoria Television Group. Do you have a passion for customer service and sales? This is the right place for you. We offer great benefits, medical, dental, life, 401k, paid vacation, and much more. 
call me and let me show you why the Victoria Television Group sales team is the right choice for you. Have you ever had guests, Yaman, that you wanted to leave in less than four days? There's ever been there? There's some guests that I'd like them to stay longer. Yaman, that is so sweet of you. <laughs> stay another week, Kelly. Oh, no, I can't. I've got to go. <laughs> Next live, Edward Norton and Naomi Aki. Plus, we're kicking off live's Bake It Easy Week. <laughs> And now it's time and now it's time for today's question of the day. Are there only red poinsettias? Okay, let's take a look. Janet, Kenneth, Luke, Beth, let's see, Orlo, Patricia, Mary, Helen, Anna, and Melanie and Merritt all guess no that there's a variety of colors, Trey. Mm, well, good going. Thanks everyone for chiming in. The question of the day. The answer is, of course. There is no, of course not, poinsettias come in red, white, pink, burgundy, marbled, or speckled. I'll tell you what, all kind of poinsettias out there. Of course, red are the famous ones symbolizing Christmas. So there you go. Appreciate you listening and answering to the question of the day. And we'll be back tomorrow for your day on Tuesday for another great question of the day to get your brain going for the morning. A winter storm is slamming Northern California, bringing heavy snow and drenching rain. The high winds caused power outages across Northern California over the weekend. In South Lake Tahoe, motorists hoping to head to the Sierra were stuck in delays Sunday morning. Authorities say many key roads were closed because of heavy snow, including a stretch of California Highway 89 between Tahoe City and South Lake Tahoe. Weather experts say the rain and snow will be clearing out of Northern California sometime this morning. This notice is for those summoned for jury duty today at the Victoria County Courthouse. You are asked to not appear. That 8.30 a.m. session is canceled and will not be rescheduled. Victoria County Commissioners meet today at 10 a.m. at the Victoria County Courthouse. Here's a look at what's on the agenda. They'll consider approval of the request to pay out the compensatory time for the county fire marshal. Commissioners will also consider approval of the residential contract between the Victoria Regional, the Victoria Juvenile the Victoria Regional Juvenile Justice Center and Brazoria County. If you cannot attend Commissioner's Court today in person, the meeting will be available via Zoom. Toys for Tots Stuff the Truck wrapped up Sunday. It went on all weekend at both HEBs and is an annual toy donation drive to make sure children all receive gifts this Christmas. Last year, over 16,000 children in the Crossroads area received toys through Toys for Tots. The Dorothy O'Connor Pet Adoption Center says their presence for Pets Drive is turning out to be amazing this year. As you can see from their Facebook, they want to give a special thanks to Allo 4-H who added to their growing stockpile this weekend. Especially the Murray, Dornberg and Taylor families. If you'd like to help out, you can drop off a donation at their location at 135 Progress Drive. This is a house on Tanglewood Street. You can submit your holiday photos too. Just come to our website and click on the red banner at the top that says the 2022 holiday page and upload your house lights, your Christmas trees, your Christmas pets, or also the Christmas Santa photos. Don't forget about the Grinch. We look forward to seeing those photos. We'll select one more entry to profile in our newscast before Christmas Day. And we want to invite you to experience our new digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and on your cell phone. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. And let's take another look at our viewer poll. Today we asked, have you ever had a package stolen? All right, let's take a look. 20% of you say yes, you unfortunately have. And 80, oh, now it's changing. 78% of you say no, and now 22% of you say yes. Keep on taking part in our viewer poll. You can do that all throughout the day. Just go to crossroadstay.com slash vote. And you can also scan that QR code right there on your screen to take part. And you can also be sure to add some tracking or follow that tracking number for your packages and maybe require a signature to avoid being a victim of theft. And now we turn to First Warren Storm Team Meteorologist Trey Mining. Trey, it's National Poinsettia Day, but it's gonna get chillier later this week. Do I need to bring my plant inside? Potentially, potentially, it may get near that cold, and we'll be tracking the Carolina, tracking. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Make sure you're awake. 
All right, temperature is by the time we get to 8 o'clock, 65 degrees, and well into the 70s by the afternoon time with the cloudy skies, maybe a passing rain shower. Notice by your Tuesday warm throughout the majority of the day, reaching your 80 degrees, 7 o'clock, and the front moving through Victoria. Temperature is taking a tumble behind it, and this is the uh, first of two cold fronts passing through this week. Warm front coming in from the south, coming up later on in the day today, keeping our temperatures on the warm side for your Monday. Highs today, 76 degrees, and then chilly temperatures coming up, not in the overnight, but late in the day on Tuesday, with highs near 80 degrees. And there's a cold air coming in by the weekend. Get ready for it. Back to you, Carolina. All right, Trey, thank you, and thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Come to Crossroads today at Confirmal Local Sports Weather and News. Join James, Don, Karina, Howie, and Gino for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.